Year 7. Let's get started on our first lesson of uh, Year 7 Humanities for Term 2, Week 1. Uh, we're starting a new topic. If you guys remember last term, uh, at the end of the term we finished up uh, the first topic in Humanities, which was Civics and Citizenship. In Term 2, we're looking at Economics. Term 3, we're looking at History. Term 4, we're looking at Geography. Uh, so we're starting economics today. Uh, what I'm going to try and do with most of these little video tutorials or lectures, whatever you want to call them, is go through the lesson plan on Compass. Go through these slides, which I'm putting in Google Classroom, and I will show you where to put those slides. I will show you how to use your little digital notebook. I will show you where in the textbook you should be. And uh, yeah, hopefully that should be enough information to get you guys through each lesson. And at the start of the next video, if you guys have a lot of questions um, about the content or about the technology that we're using for this e-learning stuff, then I will go over those questions in the next video at the start. It's like a little you know, frequently asked questions uh, bit. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let me get started. So our lesson plan for the first lesson of uh, week one in term two in humanities is... Developing our understanding of economics and defining the base economic principles in term technology. Our success criteria is to explain the difference between a consumer and producer, a good and service, needs and wants, and how these concepts are connected in an economy. Listen activities to what we're doing. Reading through the class slides, slides 1 to 10, and completing these slide questions and activities. These set lesson activities to be completed in your digital notebook and will require access to chapter 20.2 of your humanities textbook and ebook. Um, where it says video lecture there, once I finish recording this video, <laughs> I'm just going to put a little uh, YouTube link in the lesson plan so you guys can access that there. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, please let me know. I should point out that this is 7F3, 74, your page will look exactly the same. Um, instead of making two identical videos, <laughs> I'll just make one video for each of my year seven classes. Um, so instead of 7 of 3, your page obviously says 74. Instead of lesson plan 16th or the 4th, uh, your first lesson is on the 17th on Friday. So anyway, just wanted to clarify that so you're not in the wrong place <laughs> if you're looking at this video. So I'll go straight to the slides. Make that bigger. Uh, so year 7, economics. So what will we be looking at in economics? We're going to be looking at what economics means, that's probably a good starting point, and how it is influenced by all people. Some people think economics is mostly just to do with money, and to do with you know, businesses who make that money. It's not. It's a, it does with everyone. Uh, so resources, scarcity, cost, uh, cost versus benefits, uh, the terms and skills related to financial literacy. So literacy is how well you speak and write. Not very well if you miss it happily. <laughs> financial literacy is basically how well you can use terms that relate to finance, so relate to money, relate to economics. So any language that we use in economics, like scarcity and cost versus benefit and resources, there, that's considered financial literacy. The role of consumers and producers in economics, the importance of setting a budget for individuals or businesses, and the world of work, why and how employment, so having a job, functions. So that's just our overall unit plan. That's not what we are doing in this lesson. That's what we're doing across a term. <laughs> so don't freak out like, oh, this is going to be a big lesson. Anyway, what we are doing this lesson, this is just your learning intention and success criteria that I went over on Compass. You can see I've also gotten a couple of these slides. Just little uh, lesson language tips and tricks, I suppose. Some of these underlined words you might not know the meaning of. Um, so I might put those at the start of the lesson there. So that's describing the difference between vocabulary. So all the words we use in English language, English vocabulary, versus terminology. So words in a specific topic. So in the English language, the word good can have different meanings. So I could say good job. But in economics, it has specific economics meaning. It's economics terminology. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. And a broken up. There we go. Introduction. In economics, we study how business and consumers are connected, how we meet our wants and needs, and how to use our limited resources. Before I go any further as well, I recommend, guys, before you move on to the next slide, or even before you start listening to me talk about the slide, go check out that video there. Just gives you a quick little definition on our scarcity on economics. 
So in economics, we look at businesses and consumers and how to use our limited resources. The biggest problem we face in economics, it's referred to as the economic problem, the economic problem, capital letters, is something called scarcity, which is a fancy way of saying it's limited. There are limits to what you have there. So we have a limited amount of wood, food, oil, money, time, water, etc. All those things, they are not infinite. We don't have an unlimited amount of them. Eventually, we will run out of food. We will run out of oil. We will run out of money, time, water, etc. This means we cannot have everything we want. Put my little face. Individuals, businesses, and governments need to answer the scarcity problem. So if you're an individual, you need to answer the question of, well, I don't have enough food to continue eating forever. <laughs> At some point, I'll have to stop that. I'll have to fix this problem. If I'm in business, well, I don't have enough money to pay 100 billion employees, so I'm going to have to have fix that scarcity problem. So we've all got these scarcity problems. So what do we use these resources for? How much should we produce and why? Those are the questions you answer to answer the problem of scarcity. So every business, when they make a decision, every consumer and producer, they say, okay, what am I using it for? How much should I make? And why am I making this? Now, if you just want a basic definition of economics, economics is the study. I'm not sure if you guys can see where my face is. I'm going to move me out of the way there. Economics is the study of how the decisions or actions of consumers, so you, and producers, businesses, impact our lives. For example, if I purchase a new laptop from JB Hi-Fi, that is going to have consequences. There's going to be a cause and an effect there. So every action has a reaction. If I purchase a laptop from JB Hi-Fi, that's going to help me study and work. It's going to provide me with entertainment. So positive, good things. However, I may no longer have money for groceries. <laughs> so that's cause, buying a new laptop, effect, work, study, entertainment, but also no money for groceries. I provided JB Hi-Fi with the money to help sell new products and pay their staff. So by buying something from JB Hi-Fi, I give them money. They can use that money to make new products, to buy new products, and to pay their staff, their employees there. So I'm helping the workers at JB Hi-Fi. However, by purchasing it from JB Hi-Fi, another store might not be able to pay their staff now. So now if everyone goes to JB Hi-Fi and buys their stuff somewhere like Kmart or Target, they might have to fire employees, or they might not be able to make as many things as they would if I had gone and bought something from their store. So what I'm trying to get at here, guys, is that everything in economics is connected. Everything in an economy is connected. Everything you do, every purchase you make, everything you sell has a cause and effect. So we'll look at that further on throughout the unit. Now, what is economics? Goods and services. So if we wish to live happy and healthy lives, consumers must meet their needs and wants. So basically every person, every consumer has needs and wants. We have things that are essential to our life. I need it to live and I have something that I want. So it might improve my life, but I can probably live without it. So a need might be something like water or food. A want might be something like new clothes or an iPhone or something like that. To meet our needs and wants, producers, so these big businesses, will offer goods and services. So those are the things that are going to meet my needs and wants. I mentioned food, water, iPhone. Those things are goods. So a good is a physical item that satisfies our needs and wants, phone, car, clothing, etc. A service is a bit more complicated. A service isn't something you can hold in your hands. It's an action being performed by someone else to help you out, to satisfy your needs and wants. So I can't hold a doctor's appointment in my hand. <laughs> That's something being done for me. It's an action done by someone else to help my needs and wants. It's helping my need to be healthy. You know, they might be giving me medicine. A car service, so a mechanic performs a service. A haircut, that's technically an action being done by someone else that's a service. So we've got needs and wants to make us happy and healthy, and the needs and wants are met by goods and services. Who is responsible for all that, though? I've mentioned consumers and producers uh, several times now. This is a bit of information on who those people are. So a consumer is someone who purchases goods and services. So for example, a Glen Waverley Secondary College buying lunch from the canteen or from KFC <laughs> or watching Netflix, your parents shopping for groceries, Mrs. Happily buying a new iPhone. That's a consumer. A consumer is someone who purchases. They consume goods and services. A producer 
is someone who produces. They create something. So they create goods and services. Someone like a doctor, a teacher, a cafe owner, a mechanic, artist, big companies like Nike, Disney, KFC, those are producers. So in conclusion, you've got your consumers and producers who buy and sell things. And what they're buying and selling are these goods and services to meet your needs and wants. And economics is the study of how all of that is connected. Cool. So it's a study of how consumers and producers interact with each other. Big old circle, circle of life. A consumer may work at a business to afford more goods and services. The producer uses this work to create more goods and services to sell to consumers. That sounds a bit complicated because I've used the words consumers and producers about a hundred times. <laughs> but what that's getting at again is this idea that everything is connected. And I'll show that in the next slide. You can see some of my impressive Photoshop work at work though. So how is everything connected? Basically what I just said, all of these things are connected to each other. Consumers, producers, goods and services, it's all connected to each other. Economics can be thought of as a circle. So we have something called the circular model of economics that explains how goods, services, consumers and producers are all connected. And they're all connected within Glen Waverley. They're connected within Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and the world. Economics is a big old circle everywhere. How that circle works is a producer, like McDonald's, will create goods and services. A consumer, like Mr. Tapley, I think I photoshopped my face over a woman. Uh, anyway, <laughs> a consumer <laughs> buys goods and services from the producer, so I'm giving them money, and I'm filling my needs and wants by buying things. But to buy more goods and services, I'm going to go and have to work. So I'm going to have to work for a producer. So I might work at McDonald's, or I might work at... Uh, Glen Waverley Secondary College. So I'm going to earn an income there. Producers are going to use the workers, use those consumers working, use their labor to create more services, which will then be sold off to the consumers. So you can see, I've used the example of McDonald's because I'm American. So producers create goods and services. Consumers buy goods and services to buy more goods and services, Mr. Tapley. Once again, I think that's a woman that photoshopped my face over. Anyway, <laughs> consumers will work for businesses and producers. Producers use the labor oops, uh, to make more goods and services. So I'll be working in the kitchen making more fries. That gives them the goods and services that they can then sell to more consumers. So it's just a big old circle. Now, what I'd like you guys to do for this lesson activity is a couple of questions in chapter 20.2 and just a little mix and match fun little activity on the next slide. So in chapter 20.2 of your Humanities textbook or your ebook, if you're looking at the digital copy, you'll be answering questions one to five in exercise one. And where you're putting those questions is your digital notebook. And I'll explain where that is and what it is in a moment. But it is in Google Docs, um, Google Classroom, Google Resources. The mix and match activity is on this slide right afterwards, last slide of the lesson, and it requires you to record the different examples in your student notebook and label them as either a good service consumer or producer. So this first one up there, McDonald's, a McDonald's store, you would just have to write down McDonald's store in your little notebook and then tell me if it's a good service consumer or producer. So a McDonald's store, are they a customer? Are they a consumer? Not really. Are they a good? Are they something you can physically hold in your hand? You'd have to have very big hands. <laughs> is it a service? Services are being done within the, within the store, within the restaurant. I'd classify McDonald's as a producer because they're making things. They're making food. If I looked at, let's say, an iPhone, is it a service? Not really. It's not really an action that someone's doing for you. Is it a customer? No, it is a piece of technology. <laughs> is it a producer? Again, no. I'd classify it as a good. It's something physical you can hold in your hand that helps meet your needs and wants. So that's a little mix and match activity. Add several examples. That's really an optional thing. I've got a couple of uh, things on the slides that are like optional extension activities for if you finish early. You don't have to do that. Just go through that little list there, and you can put a G for good, an S for uh, services, C for consumer, P for producers. So you don't have to write all that. Now, I've also, again, I've given you a little extension activity there, which you don't have to do. It's just another set of questions uh, to extend your knowledge a bit further. So it's not necessary. It's just an extension activity. Where is everything? Good question. So in term one, you remember that I put everything in Compass Resources for you guys, nice and tidy. 
in term two, whoops, term one, I'll be putting things into Google Classrooms. So this is 70 F3, you can see I've got 74 as well there. Classwork, your student notebook will be there. So can I make that go smaller? Anyway, uh, your student notebook, all you have to do is click on this file here. Your file will be individual, it'll be personal. You won't have someone else's file, they can't edit it. Um, you just need to click on that, you don't need to make a new one. And it'll just look something like this. So all you have to do is put in your name and spell your name correctly. <laughs> put in your name, your student code, put in the lesson. So the date I'm filming this is the 15th, it's Wednesday. So it's a day before I actually put this slide up. And then I will go into my little slides. Chapter 20.2, questions one to five. Okay, chapter, oh, good thing I'm not an English teacher. Questions one. And then I wrote my little answer there. Don't copy that answer. Um, yeah. So that's where I'm putting my <laughs> workbook <laughs> information, the student notebook in classroom uh, resources assignments. These slides that you just saw, they're not in Compass. If you go to resources, year seven economics, class slides, you can just click on that little link there or you can open up the file there and it will bring you to this. Cool, cool. And you can see I've actually gone and added whee, all the slides for, oh, but now I've frozen it. There we go, maybe. Yep, I've actually added slides all the way up for the end of term two, because I'm not sure how long we'll be doing e-learning. <laughs> but my advice to you guys is literally just take this one lesson at a time. Don't jump too far ahead, because you're going to burn yourself out, and you're going to be super unhappy, and you'll also be completing stuff probably You'd want Mr. Tapley to guide you through some of this stuff, some of the complicated stuff. You don't want to have to do the work again because you jumped ahead and did the wrong thing. So just do it one lesson at a time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Just ask me, uh, email me. I can already see a few emails popping up in my inbox, and I'm responding to them very, very, very quickly. Um, and, yeah, just let me know if you have questions, guys. Um, I'm probably forgetting a few things, <laughs> but I'm sure if I've forgotten something, you guys will let me know, ask me some questions, and uh, yeah, good luck, guys. Cheers.